Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review for Arrow Season 8, Episode 4. Sorry that I missed last week, I was just extremely busy and I didn't get around to it. It would have been too late when I uploaded the video, so I do apologize for that for you guys. But yeah, I'm really, really loving Arrow right now. It's definitely the best show on the CW, I think, in my personal opinion, and they are killing it. So some people were sort of mixed about this episode, but I really, really like this episode. Maybe that's because I actually like Mia Smoke, and she was a heavy part of this episode. And I liked her. I thought she was very good, and, you know, I did like the episode as a whole. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So the future characters come to the present. That's how last episode ended, and this was because of the Monitor. This never got fully explained, but we can all presume it's because of the Monitor and his plans. So, they pick up, obviously right after Zoe's death. So, Mia, William, and Connor are all dealing with the tragedy of their friend being killed. And so this has big ramifications in the episode, because Mia is completely focused on her mission and her anger. Sort of how Oliver would, you know, deal with a death like that very much so in the vein of Oliver there's a lot of references to how similar they are oh she's definitely your daughter stuff like that so we have William Mia and Connor in the past they meet present-day team Arrow that being obviously Laurel Oliver Diggle and everyone so you know they get to eventually find out about the future and you know what's in stock for them and their children and you know everything that's gonna happen in the future so we get a lot of references there is quite a lot of setup in this episode, definitely set up for the new spin-off show, Green Arrow and the Canaries, which they are setting up. So they set up the idea that maybe Laurel, Dinah, and also Mia Smoke would be working on, you know, creating the Canary, the Canary network essentially, you know, much earlier than expected. So you have all of that set up with them mentioning that, you know, what's going to happen in the future. So it's obviously setting up that show. So, that was really good. I like those setup points. And so, the Monitor does show up at the end of the episode, and this was a major WTF, because he shows up, he meets Laurel, and at first I was like, oh shit, he's here to kill Laurel or something, you know. So, then he reveals, you know, do you want Earth 2 to return, essentially, and essentially is enticed into listening to him. So... The way that Earth 2 can come back, and I don't think it's actually possible for Earth 2 to come back, is the Monitor tells her you have to betray Oliver. So I'm guessing this is going to be in relation to Oliver not trusting the Monitor anymore. It's going to be something to do with that, I do believe. However, it could be something completely different. Maybe it is something to help aid Oliver in sort of believing in the Monitor even further with Laurel betraying him. You know, maybe there is some sort of definite consequence with him not working with the monitor so i think he's just definitely trying to get out oliver and whether laurel actually betrays oliver i'm not sure like i don't actually think she's gonna betray oliver maybe she fakes it but then you know it doesn't actually turn out to be that way she is tricking the monitor i would hazard the guess okay so we have this conflict like i said the conflict this episode was between mainly connor and diggle but also William doesn't have anything, but Mia and Oliver have conflict, and also there is conflict with Renee as well, due to the fact that he finds out that Zoe is actually killed in the future. We get young Zoe back, so there is a lot of conflict going on. So let's just talk about the Mia and Oliver stuff. You know, there is a real hatred and anger inside Mia, and Oliver sort of knows this. He tries to get to her, and eventually by the end of the episode, he is able to get to her. But I really like the stuff between them two. I think they were really good. Also, especially I loved William in this episode. I thought he was terrific. I thought Ben did a really good job. And especially the scenes with him and his dad. You know, Stephen and him, they really paid off each other really well. Sort of just smiling back and forth, laughing. There's a great scene in their apartment. And, you know, it's just very sentimental, and I, I really like that stuff. Also, there is the conflict between Connor and Diggle. You know, at first Diggle's like, who the hell is this guy? You know, he kind of doesn't believe, but, you know, he does underneath his skin. But he sort of has this conflict because he doesn't know 
if he trusts him, you know, then he eventually finds out about JJ being, you know, evil in the future and sort of he loses his trust. But by the end of the episode, they're working together, they're training together. Renee's making this speech as he's trying to become the mayor of Star City as well. Obviously, that was teased that he would become mayor of Star City, so that was a future plot point that was revealed to him in the past. So we have that ending scene, that sort of montage with him talking. You get to see all the people together. You know, Mia is embraced by Oliver and also William. So, you know, everything's going on like that. So it seems like the future Team Arrow are here to stay, at least until Crisis. I think they could stick around, you know, for the next few episodes after that because Arrow's only 10 episodes this season. One of the really good scenes in the episode was with William as he comes out to his dad. I thought that was a really, really nice scene. Very touching and I thought they did it in the perfect way to be honest and so I really really like that like I said I think Ben was really good he was one of the best parts of the episode obviously Steven as well but anyway so you have that that's some great stuff but then also you have the setup stuff going for the spin-off but at the same time you got the return of a major character you got Curtis who shows up as you guys know I'm not a big fan of Curtis but it was just a nice addition seeing him back it was great fun seeing him back and you know it was just a welcome addition to this season because you know it is the final season so you want to get as many people back as you can and that's what they've been doing every episode and yeah I just really appreciated that Curtis came back even though I'm not the biggest fan of him I thought he was pretty good in this episode so you have all the stuff as well going on with Deathstroke in present day and you know at first they're like is it Slade no it's not and the future team arrow know about the Deathstroke gang, so they're like, oh my god, it's it's JJ. But it turns out it's Grant Wilson, you know, Deathstroke's other son, and he's in present day. It's all changed because, you know, this is not how it was supposed to go. You know, his base is destroyed and things like that. So the future will change. They've changed the timeline in some way. Obviously, it should have ramifications on, you know, our future team arrow, but I don't know how well they're going to stick to like time travel rules with the butterfly effect they mentioned it but still with all this stuff it will change their future and their past so yeah i don't know it's kind of complicated but so now let's move on to talk about some crisis stuff so obviously we mentioned the laurel stuff going on at the end of the episode that's going to be a big thing going into next episode and obviously there will be more crisis set up as we go along towards crisis but Stephen and Mel, and this is really interesting, he posted slash leaked because he was recording a screener copy, the intro slash opening of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it's really interesting. I'm going to show it on the screen right now. He recorded this, he posted it on Twitter, and so it's just super exciting. So they finished the logo the other day, and they've, you know, animated and put together this intro. You have the Flash's lightning going first, and then you have the monitor who shows up. And you have Oliver's arrow going across, you got the wave rider shooting up into the sky, and then it says Crisis on Infinite Earths. Obviously, I don't think this is like a finalized version, they're still definitely editing right now, but they are putting together these cuts, which is very exciting that they are working on it. And you know, they've got a, quite a long while, they got like maybe a, a month, I would say, to you know, completely finalize with special effects and you know, actually editing the episodes and maybe this intro slash opening changes at one point but for now it's really really good i really love it and i just can't wait to see this and i'm very very happy steven posted this so yeah great stuff okay so the last thing i want to talk about is this photo right here we get a new look at the anti-monitor it's a lot closer than we've had on some of the other photos this is actually la monica garrett posting it so you see him and he makes a joke about the anti-monitor facing the monitor. He's facing the monitor right here. Great stuff. But you get to see his suit. That's what I'm really interested in. Y you know, you get to really see the detail. And I think it's very, very good. Obviously, it's very bulky. Sort of a bit like the anti-monitor in the comics. Apart from, obviously, I've said this many times. But the anti-monitor in Crisis is fucking massive. I don't know how massive they're going to make him in this crossover. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss any Arrow videos, 
as we head towards crisis i'm going to do my best to make it every week i apologize for last week so i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.